So hi, I'm Uli, I'm a founder of a software uh, group called The Guild. Uh, we do open source uh, around APIs. We're very dominant in the GraphQL space. Like if you're using GraphQL, you're probably using one of our tools, our open source tools. Uh, but we also do more like open source software now in the general API space. And that's also the, the main point from, from my talk here. Um, People know us from GraphQL, but we like to see GraphQL as a, not as a, as a new technology, but just as an evolution of a lot of existing technologies. Um, so that also means that we now grew out of the GraphQL space, uh, also into the open API space and other uh, API specs. Um, the talk would first start with just like a general, I will talk a bit about like general GraphQL, what it is, but also what I believe GraphQL is, which is a bit different, I think, than the usual take of other people. Um, and I'll share a bit what we do also in the GraphQL Foundation. Um, but then I'll start talking about how from working with large companies to, uh, to introduce or to improve GraphQL, we saw that actually we can use tools, ideas, best practices uh, from GraphQL uh, onto existing, uh, existing APIs, like existing systems. Uh, and most of the work we do is never in the void. It's never like, you know, you start something from scratch, there you don't have anything. You always build on something you already have, like you have existing APIs with SOAP, APIs, open APIs, just general REST. And even, even like SQL is, like, is, you can call it an API spec. So what we've done for the first uh, stage is to take, uh, build a tool that's called GraphQL Mesh that takes uh, basically any API and converts it automatically into a GraphQL representation. So we can take today your existing APIs existing REST API, SOAP APIs, and clients or consumers can just send a GraphQL query to it as if it was a GraphQL API. And you don't need to do a migration, you don't need to build a new GraphQL API, you can just use your existing systems. So that's the first kind of like take of the talk. And then uh, the second part is, well, yeah, by the way, and we also do the other way around. So we can take like GraphQL APIs and expose them as REST APIs. If you, let's say you are already having your GraphQL API, but some of your consumers want to query REST. They don't like the GraphQL um, idea. So you can just introduce REST automatically. You don't need to build it twice. You don't need to maintain the multiple gateways just because it's different technologies. But then the, the last point that I'm making, and I think this is uh, why also this is like a take on GraphQL and on APIs in general that I, I don't think I'm hearing a lot outside of, you know, the tools and the ecosystem that we're all building, is that, well, if you can represent any API as GraphQL, and you can re represent GraphQL as any other API, you can even not migrate to GraphQL at all, and still enjoy all the best practices and tools that exist in the GraphQL ecosystem. So you can take your existing APIs, leave them as is, but then use GraphQL tools to prevent breaking changes from your APIs, to track usage of your APIs, to build your APIs, to manage it in a much um, a more advanced way, and you don't need to migrate all your systems to it. So, the main, I guess, point of the talk is let's stop talking in GraphQL, open API, and give it names. Let's just talk about APIs and abilities, uh, remove the names, and then just gradually introduce features and things we need into our existing APIs uh, and build the tools to, to do that. So I really hope you watch the talk. I think it's very interesting and also it's a take on GraphQL and APIs that I don't think you could you hear often too much today, mostly because um, companies like to confine you in their own space solution or in their own, you know, um, in their own, uh, let's say it's GraphQL company or it's an open API company. But if you break the barriers, you can actually use any tool for any job and, and expand your APIs.